decal machine does not yet provide an automated way to do texture matching, similar to how it can match plain materials. So until then, you will have to do it manually, which by the way, was possible all along, especially for object space texture coordinates. So let's say you want to match this procedural texture, so your decal integrates nicely. What you would do is copy the contributing nodes over to the decal material, and hook them up. But despite it being the same texture, using the same node properties, it won't match. And that is because Blender's procedural textures, use generated UVs by default. You can tell, because muting this node now, changes nothing. Generated texture coordinates depend on an object's bounding box. And this is where the new, init generated UVs tool comes in. You can find it in the main decal machine panel. Running it with one or multiple decals selected, will make the bounding boxes of the decals match the bounding boxes of the parent objects. As a result, the textures will match as well. You can see here how this is achieved. Loose vertices are created, at the coordinates of the parent object's bounds. You could then create drivers, to essentially link values on both materials together. Changing one value, will then change the one in the other material as well. Another approach is to group the nodes, making sure to not expose any of the values. Then just copy the group to any decal material, you want to match. You can then change whatever you want in the group's node tree, and it will update all materials using that group accordingly. For these decals here, the tool can't be called. That's because they are neither projected nor sliced. Projected decals, and panel decals created with slice, E-panel or G-panel, will always share the origin with their parent object. And this is a condition for this texture matching approach to work. So here we finally have a situation, where projecting flat decals, laying on a flat surface, is necessary. Notice how the decal origin now matches the parent object, as is the case for the previous decal. And now, we can initialize the generated coordinates of these decals as well. It works for two-sided panel decals like this one as well. It just has two slots to connect to. If you don't want to use generated coordinates, you can use object coordinates as well. I like using these, as they don't stretch depending on the object bounds, and don't require any decal mesh adjustments either. So, you can actually remove the loose verts again, if you use object coordinates. The decal origins still need to match the parent origins however, so you will still need to project flat decals on flat surfaces, as shown.